ESG, green energy, what buzzwords since last year, right? And now with crude hitting the triple digit mark, scaling new highs, once again, there's so much conversation about substituting fossil fuels with green energy, renewables. Unfortunately, all of this gets a lot more attention when we see oil shocks like the ones that we are seeing today. So in Startup Central, we're putting the spotlight on, on startups that are solving problems and trying to find substitutes for fossil fuel energy. One of them is Reconnect. Uh, Reconnect is using Internet of Things, artificial intelligence for creating a digital product which actually feeds a grid with renewable energy. Joining me to talk about this is the co-founder Vishal Pandya. Hi Vishal, thanks so much uh, for agreeing to do this. So you tell our viewers, first up, what is it that Reconnect is doing and the problem it's solving? Yes, hi Nantara. Uh, Reconnect Energy stands for Digital Energy World uh, and uh, we could not be more happier than you know anybody else having oil climbed well above 110 because it will only fast track the uh, clean energy transition, not only in India, but globally. Uh, what we do here is basically not put on more and more assets, but uh, see that across the energy value chain, be it generation, transmission, or distribution, how can we enable uh, uh, you know these assets to operate more optimally and in a more climate resilient manner uh, using new age technology tools like uh, AI, IoT, remote sensing, and automation. And, and this is what uh, drives our core business, uh, where we work with very large number of renewable energy assets on, uh, asset owners, uh, electric utilities uh, in generation as well as transmission and distribution. Okay. And how does it exactly work? Explain to our viewers. Because, you know, they're yes. not going to be having the technology of, you know, checking out what kind of renewable energy is feeding a grid. Right. Yeah, so I'll start with a few simple examples. Like uh, India has scaled up to roughly about 100 uh, gigawatt of renewable energy, largely contributed by wind and solar assets. Now, wind and solar both are variable in nature. They are not available at all the times. And if you want more and more renewable energy to penetrate the grid, uh, you also need to see that how well you can predict them and how well in advance, uh, uh, whether it's intraday basis or day ahead basis or week ahead basis or season ahead basis. Uh, capturing the variability is one of the first and foremost tasks if you want more and more renewable energy. Uh, battery storage is still very expensive and uh, per unit cost of battery energy storage system is well beyond affordability of a uh, large number of Indian users. Hence, the predictive analytics come very handy, understanding what kind of renewable energy production you are looking at, uh, what kind of supply side dynamics you have. And if you look at the electric demand also, that is another area where we work very extensively with yeah. the distribution companies, is understanding the demand behavior. Demand is a function of uh, the political events, the macroeconomics, uh, the seasonality of the uh, weather and so on and so forth. And uh, with more and more variability getting injected in the grid, uh, to maintain the grid balance, the demand and supply, which is very essential to function a, a very robust and resilient power grid, uh, that is where the technology tools come in handy. You predict renewable supply, you predict weather, you predict electric demand, consumer behavior, look at how the markets are functioning in power market, and then enable utilities to make those decisions where uh, the grid operations are kind of maintained uh, and you enable larger and larger roadmap for uh, accommodating uh, more and more renewables as we progress further. The tools that we offer basically are, are a combination of AI, automation, and remote sensing, uh, where we predict all these variables, optimize a lot of decision making, uh, create a digital uh, technology stack where uh, the utilities are, are basically given a lot of business intelligence which can drive their operations around asset management, monitoring, as well as uh, market participation. So, you know, I was going through a, a corporate presentation of uh, Reconnect, which is on the website as well where you have made this claim that you have the, you know, uh, you're the most preferred partner for renewable energy producers. Yes. 
um, uh, and also how you're going to reach certain targets of gigawatts. Tell our viewers about it. And how are you backing these claims? Yes, so uh, we are a 12 year old organization and our foundation, uh, as well as the name, if you see, the RE stands for Renewable Energy. And we have really rooted uh, philosophy to drive sustainability through propagation of renewable energy. Uh, India is one of the few countries which has uh, made a stand that we will move towards cleaner and digital energy ecosystem. And RE is one of the cornerstones of the transition. Uh, in renewable energy, what uh, we do and how we scale our business is that uh, a lot of capacity is getting added. There are a lot of regulatory mandates around uh, predicting the capacity of renewables on daily basis, weekly basis, intraday basis. And uh, if your predictions go wrong, there are also penalties associated with it. So this is one of the area where a uh, lot of asset owners, uh, they, they basically engage uh, companies like ours to carry out this energy prediction and dispatch automation work, where we interface these assets with the grid uh, operators and uh, they take these energy data into consideration, uh, managing the grid uh, behavior on a daily basis. Hmm. Now, you uh, you know, what I would like to know is, uh, you would primarily, be, of course, be working about the distribution companies. Uh, do you also you work with energy consumers, even if, you know, they're B2B energy consumers? Uh, the current business uh, revolves primarily on the energy production, which is largely renewable, and the transmission and distribution companies. The transmission uh, and distribution is the new area where a uh, lot of digital tools that we provide via our technology platform GridConnect are being deployed. Uh, one small example is that India has earmarked roughly about a thousand crore plus budget to digitalize the wholesale energy market. Uh, under a framework called SAMAS. And uh, there the idea is that you digitalize entire uh, wholesale market participation process, energy billing, energy accounting, uh, participation in market. And there again, we provide a very uh, scalable automation stack uh, through Grid Connect, which gets deployed across transmission system operators and some of the distribution companies. So uh, as of today, our primary client base is uh, driven by renewables and as we progress in terms of the uh, scale of business, we see more and more deployment of our technology across transmission and distribution sector. Okay. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you, Vishal, for taking the time out, for uh, explaining to us how exactly it is that you're working through all of this. Uh, we're putting a spotlight on those that are solving these problems or making this planet a better place to live. Yeah, thank you so much, Nantara. Pleasure talking to you. Largest uh, online marketplace for beauty, cosmetics, makeup. What a successful story, right? right from becoming a startup to the IPO that we all saw in 2021. What goes behind the success of Nykaa? How will it maintain its edge? How will it get bigger? What else is it looking at? What are the new trends that we're seeing? All of that coming up for you on Leaders of Tomorrow with Nykaa's Advaita Nair as well as Anjit Nair. Here's a sneak peek. So, you know, I think for Nika, um, both on the beauty and fashion side, content is insanely important because we really are trying to make uh, the consumption of these categories very rooted in education and inspiration. And for that, con content is key. I think what Anshit and I are both struck by is just how dynamic um, the content landscape is. And even if we look back over the nine years that we've been building Nika, uh, what really constituted good content is changing dramatically. Premium beauty uh, and premium fashion and one, what one might call luxury, is a segment that has been slightly under catered to in the past, especially online. Uh, and India, if you look at BPC consumption today, India has some of the lowest premiumization rates in the world. So there is massive runway in India for premiumization to occur in the lifestyle categories of beauty and fashion. Um, and Nika has the largest assortment uh, of, of luxury and premium brands available on its platform today. So we are the perfect 
uh, destination for, for premium duty consumption. Uh, yeah. Also, the fact that we're an authentic retailer. If you look at other e-commerce platforms, they're mostly marketplaces, whereas we are an inventory-led business on the beauty side. I echo a lot of what Anshit says. I think for me, it's also, you know, just uh, coming back to the fundamentals, like India just didn't have enough brands. And I feel that acutely uh, on, on the fashion side in particular, um, there was there's just so many white spaces in terms of categories where Indian women and men don't have enough choices. So I think it's a right playing field for new brands to emerge. That entire conversation and Leaders of Tomorrow coming up for you tonight at 10.30 p.m. only on ET Now.